have some announcements. Unfortunately, we lost a dear member of our congregation yesterday. Margie Powers passed away yesterday afternoon. Let's please remember her friends and family in our prayers. We don't do the uh, funeral arrangements yet. I know uh, John has been in contact with her uh, nephew about the arrangements and that information will be forthcoming uh, very soon. Uh, we like to keep Nina Lee Dunnevin in our prayers. Nina has a health concern. Let's keep Nina Lee in our prayers. Frank Warren was in town over the weekend. Many of you, many of you got to see Frank. Frank did get a turkey. Uh, but he was around. Stephen took him riding yesterday morning and uh, brought him down to the hunt club. And I think he had a big time, but he, he was cracking jokes and it looked like he was doing very, very well. So let's, Continue to keep Frank in our thoughts. He had to command Stephen for doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was wearing on him. So. <laughs> <laughs> he, he even came to Aubrey's ball game at the uh, Little League Park. That might be one of the first games he's probably been to in forever. And he said, I, I helped build this ball. <laughs> and they laid it all when they started. I didn't know that. Random people started talking to him, and they were like, "You taught me." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had a big time. Yeah, his daughter told me he closed the place down. Oh, <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. All right, what other announcements do we have, Nancy? Oh, uh, Leona Hazelwood, who is 101, her 97 year old sister died this week, and she will be buried graveside uh, Saturday at one o'clock in Victoria. Victoria. Also, Ginger wanted me to announce that the circle will be next Monday, the eighth at or ninth at seven o'clock at the church. All, All right. the ladies for the people yeah. be coming to the UMW on the circle. All right, on the ninth here at the church. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. All right, thank you, Nancy. Any other announcements? Let's begin our worship service.
people of all ages, we are all children of God. Today we're going to be talking about love, and love has many different forms, and as children we experience it very differently, usually first from our parents. So, but children are very insecure. Have you ever heard a little kid, I like you, do you like me? I love you, but do you love me? And they need that reassurance, and we all need the reassurance that we're loved. But sometimes we forget that love is a gift. God gives us love for no reason at all. And so often when we give love, we expect something in return. Well, that's not a gift. That's a transaction. That's a business deal. And that's not what love is all about. So as children of God, it's okay to say, I love you. And do you love me? But if they say no, that's still okay. Your gift is still a blessing to them and to them. Love is always a gift, and we're always grateful. Now let us receive the gift of this little dandelion flower from a kid who thinks it's the most beautiful blossom in the world. And it is. Amen. Okay, those lucky ones again, off they go. Let's all go, shall we? <laughs> oh, Let us pray. Oh God of light, by the power of your Holy Spirit, restore our sight that in these words of scripture and sermon we may see Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is taken again from the Gospel of John. It continues on from what we had last week, beginning in chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Later, Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there. Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who it was. He called out, Hey, fellows, you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, Throw your net on the right-hand side of the boat, and you'll get some. So they did. And they couldn't haul it in the net because it, there were so many fish in it. Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic, for he had stripped for work, jumped into the water, and headed for shore. The others stayed with the boat and pulled the loaded net to the shore, for they were only about a hundred yards from shore. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Bring some of the fish you've just caught, Jesus said. So Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore. There were a hundred and fifty-three large fish, yet the net had not torn. Now come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. Now the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. This was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. After breakfast, Jesus said, Ask Simon Peter, Simon. Son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then 
feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, when you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted to go. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hand and others will dress you and take you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to let him know by what kind of death he would glorify God. Then Jesus told him, follow me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, what's love got to do with it, we think? Everything, of course, but what kind of love? Um, we're talking about love, and, and it begins with God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes him shall not perish, but shall have, ever to have eternal life. That's an awesome kind of love. It's an agape kind of love, the kind of love that requires nothing in return, that is not earned, nor can it be lost. But we, our kind of love, we, we talk about love so flippantly. I mean, we talk about, oh, if we love our parents, we love our spouse, our children, our family, our neighbors, our pet. Now that all invokes kind of an emotional feeling of, of love, of, of warmth, usually, if you had a good family, and good neighbors, and good pets. And that's not what love is about only. Sure, it's great, but then we talk about, well, I love pizza. I love the tacos we had last week. I love my new car. I love football. March Madness was awesome. I loved it. Do you like my new haircut? I just love the way it makes me look. These jeans, do they make me look bad? Mm. <laughs> I love my boat. I love my house. I love to walk in the park. I love taking a vacation. Those are all words that we use for love. But I don't think that was what Jesus was talking about. I know it wasn't. It's not about things. Or even people said, Jesus said, you know, if you love your family more than me, you don't really love me. So there's the agape kind of love, the kind that God gives, that flows out continuously, never failing. And, and then there's a, a friendship kind of love, filial love. And then there's eros love, though, for your fun kind of thing, whatever, sexual love, sorry. We don't talk about that in church, do we? Of course we do. Oh dear, Song of Solomon, yes indeed. Well, love shows up. And that's what Jesus did. Of course, he showed up for the third time to, to show his disciples that he truly was alive. I mean, it was really a big deal then. They didn't even, all of the Jews, believe that there was life after death. And Jesus said, not only is there life after death, but watch me. Here I am, I'm coming back again. It was the third time that he came, and, and there would be more times. And in a way, it's kind of a, a back to the beginning kind of revelation to them. Because was it not on the Sea of Galilee that Jesus first called Peter? The first miraculous catch of fish. I mean, back in that day, they, they caught so many fish when Jesus said, hey, toss your net out one more time. And they did, even though they said, this is crazy, we've been working all night, we've got nothing. And the net was so big that it started to break. So full of fish was that net. Wow. And so Jesus then tells oh, Peter, and follow me. Wow. It's the beginning of the most beautiful story in the world when Jesus says, follow me. Jesus shows up in, in everyday life. Not only was he on the beach, and not only did he give them another miraculous catch of fish, but this time the net didn't break. And this time Jesus was cooking them breakfast. No miraculous, you know, multiplying of the loaves and the fishes this time. He had breakfast ready, and, oh, hey, bring me a couple more of your fish. And that's what Jesus calls us to do, is, is bring what we have to the table, into his presence. It doesn't have to be everything that's needed. 
God has plenty of supplies of his own, and even greater if he doesn't. He's good at that. So Jesus calls his disciples to come join him for breakfast, and he served them breakfast. He cooked them breakfast. Love shows up, not just as a, a feeling, not just as a good deed, but as service to one another, because you love them. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus washed his disciples' feet. Now he's cooking them breakfast. And he said, I came here not to be the ruler, not to judge or condemn, but to save you and, and to show you that service, helping one another, is what this is all about. So often, we don't always want to serve. I don't know about you, but there are times when it's like, I know I should do this. I really show no procrastination, and, but I just don't want to do it. And sometimes I'm, I'm good, quote, and I do it, and other times I've got a big mess for tomorrow because I've got twice as much to do. But Jesus never calls us to do more than we're capable of. Remember the story of, of the talents? He, he, this ruler's going away, and, and he's giving them what they can handle. Five talents, three talents, one talent. You haven't got more than you can handle, but, but not everybody is willing to do the work. The one with the five talents goes, yay, okay, off he goes, and he doubles the money. And he's tickled to be able to show it to the master when he returns. Well done. And the second one he had three talents, and whee, off he goes, and he does what he can, and he doubles his money, and wow. The master's pleased. And the one who only had one thought, I can't do anything with one. And this guy, this master, he's a jerk. You know, he's so, he reaps where he doesn't sow. He takes what he didn't create. He's a mean guy. The master said, okay, that's how you see it. He took what he had been given and gave it to somebody who would do stuff. And God has given each one of us talents and gifts that we can share. Sometimes we're afraid, you know? It's like, God gets us ready to do what God's going to call us to do and, and empowers us along the way. Most people don't know, but I was terrified of speaking in public. And decades ago, when I got a new job, and the, one of the people said, let's go to lunch, they're starting a new Toastmasters club, but I didn't know what it was, but I wanted to get to know this person that I was working with, so off I go. That's a public speaking organization, and leadership training. And looking back, I can see, oh my gosh, God, God was getting me over my fear of public speaking. It's awfully hard to preach the good news if you pass out of the pulpit. <laughs> So, so God is already preparing you for what he wants you to do. And, and along the way, God gives you more of what you need or supplements or sends somebody else. Love shows up and, and love serves. And love helps. And we always need to bring what we've been given and use it as God intended. Well, again, we're back to the question, what, what kind of love is, is Jesus talking about? And in the scriptures, it all sounded the same, because I talked about love. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. But it's very different, because in the first question, Jesus said, Peter, do you agape me more than these other disciples? And Peter says, well, sure, you know, I love you best. I, you know, oh, Peter, he's full of himself. And then Jesus said, now, do you And so again, the second time, Jesus asks him, not whether he loves more, but do you accompany me? Do you have a holy kind of love for me? A complete and total love. And Peter says, I filio you, just like before. We're good friends, we're buddies. I like hanging out with you. We're gonna do stuff together. That's not what Jesus was asking, but Peter keeps answering in friendship. The third time, I, I don't know whether Jesus is going, 
All right, Peter, do you feel you ought to love me as a friend? And Peter's hurt because he's been asked a third time. Don't you believe me, Lord? You know everything. You know that I love you. As a really good friend. As a best buddy. And God takes whatever love we're capable of giving in the moment and accepts it. He doesn't reject it because it's not the perfect, godly, holy kind of love. He wants more, of course, and he will help us to, to create more love, to accept more love, to be more love. And so Jesus says to him, follow me. Sometimes we follow along and let somebody else do all the work. You know, you heard the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the work is done by 20% of the people in church or work or organizations. That's how it works out. And we're willing to follow along because if I'm the one who's doing all the work, maybe throwing in a two cents here and there, a little help there. But when Jesus says follow, he means do what I did, give what I gave, be what I am. There's so much more that we can give if we're not afraid of being rejected. I love you. Do you love me? No. I mean, just picture this. I don't know if you've ever done this. I did this. There was this guy. We were in a meeting together. And he kept trying to touch my hand. He was really good looking. <laughs> And so one day I got up the courage to, to tell him that I really, really liked him. And he goes, why do women keep doing this to me? And I was like, oh, bummer. <laughs> you know, when you tell somebody you love them and say, oh, we just want to be friends. I, I love you like a friend. And you're saying, no, I love you like, I love you. We don't always get back what we hope for. But the gift is still a gift of love. Whether you give somebody a dandelion and they say, oh, this is junk and threw it in the trash, it was still a gift. Whether or not they accepted it, could appreciate the love behind it, is in the receiver's domain. So as God has poured out his love to you and given you all his love, and all the gifts that he's given you, and the blessings and the good luck, or however you want to look at it, so awesome. Can you receive it? Will you receive it? For me, it, it was really hard to receive a compliment, you know. Oh, your hair looks good. Uh -huh. I should have washed it two days ago. <laughs> that dress is really nice. Oh, the seam is perfect. I made this. You know? It's like we have trouble accepting and just sort of saying, thank you. It doesn't mean you agree with it, but thank you for wanting to share with me a blessing, a gift. So as we follow Jesus, we have answers. So often we hear that, you know, if you believe in Jesus, and that's true, but even, even the demons believe in Jesus, so that, that's not a criteria. If you believe Jesus, they're going to do what he did. Be what he was, as best you can in any moment. Hopefully every day getting a little better than you were before. So what kind of love do we have? Is it the agape kind of love? Holy and blessed and giving for no reason and just abundant pouring of love? Or are we filial? You know, most of the time, you know, you're my best friend, I love you. I mean, i got to confess, there are times when I look at some people and I say, God loves you, and I'm sure trying. <laughs> it's not easy. But if Jesus can forgive the people who crucified him, what excuse do we have? That doesn't mean we accept their behavior. It doesn't mean we're going to be best buddies with them. But to forgive literally means to drop it. To let it go. <clears throat> Jesus' teaching was 
very simple. And he summarized all of the scripture, you know, and the commandments of God. You know, what are they? Well, love the Lord your God with all of your heart and mind and soul and strength and body and body and body. All of who you are. And love your neighbor exactly the way you love yourself. Now, sometimes that's not a good thing because sometimes we'll love our neighbors and we'll neglect our own self-care. But God wants us to take care of both. And then Jesus, of course, gave us one more commandment. Love each other just exactly the way I love you. And the world will know whether or not you're my disciple by the way that you love each other. You can't fake love. You can do good things. And we can judge each other based on that appearance. I remember one time somebody told me I was such a good person because I had volunteered to raise money for the charity in my neighborhood. And it really made me feel bad. Because the only reason I was doing it was it was going to look good on my resume when I graduated. I wasn't a good person at that moment in time. We can't judge each other's motives. We can like or, or not like, appreciate or not appreciate the behaviors and what they do or what they say. We're called by Jesus to feed and take care of and shepherd one another, always and everywhere. So what's love got to do with it? Well, if you're disciples, you're going to love one another. Doesn't mean you like them, but you're going to love one another. If you love one, you're going to be followers of Jesus and do what the ultimate example of love did and said and was. Love becomes what you are. And you become one in mind and soul and spirit with the God who created you and declared it was good, it was very good. Let's not disappoint. Do the best you can every day, every way. Amen. Our next hymn is number 381, Savior, like a ship of Vegas, verses 1, 2, and 4.
just in case you hadn't figured it out, we're not doing communion today. Pastor Kay said he'd do a little bit about that. But let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have called us to be your people. And we are, as best we can, in every moment. Some days we're better than others, and we're grateful for your help. And other days we fall short, and we're grateful for your encouragement and staying with us and loving us anyway. Father, you've called us to be one with each other and one with you so that if one of us is rejoicing, we all celebrate, and if one of us is sorrowing, we're all sorry. Lord, we lift up to you the family of Marjorie Powers. And we lift up to you Penny Callis, Tommy Hyde, Elaine Pierce, Bernadine Abbott, Ever Our church, Ed Carter, Charlie Pierce, Joan Spencer, the Church University, Natalie Barringer, Preston Milan. Chris Barrett, Anne Everson, Mary Jo Wilkinson, Frank Warren, Charles Rickers, Del Nibble, Leo and Hazel. Father, we thank you and that you care for us and for these persons even more than we dare to hope for. And Father, there are other things on our heart this day and in our souls that we need to lift up to you. And so in the silence, we give you thanks for the many blessings and apologize for the things where we miss the mark. Again, Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son and for all that he taught us, including how to pray to you as we join together in the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Because we are so well, so well loved, it is always well with our soul. Please stand for our closing hymn, number 377. It is well with our soul. Verses 1, 2, and 4.
people of God, may you soak up so much love and let it in that you get squishy. And anytime somebody pokes you, all oh, you leave this love. God's love. Go and be God's love. Amen. <laughs>